Okay, so we've been looking at um, sequestered carbon in the wood and how that flows through the system where we have different product pools. But the other thing we need to look at when we're considering LCA is the impacts of using things. And impacts can be measured in different ways. We're looking at the environmental impacts of using something and those arise because we're processing a material, we're taking, for example, timber from the forest, so we have to expend fuel and energy to uh, extract and to harvest the tree, take it uh, to the roadside and a, a lorry has to transport it to a mill and then that mill will debark the wood, uh, it will saw the wood, the wood might get planed, the wood might get uh, treated with preservative, uh, it will be dried, all the other processes that go on. So all of these things take energy and that energy has to come from somewhere. It might be grid energy, or it might be energy from natural gas, or it might be oil, lots and lots of different types of processes. And each, using each of these will have an impact. Uh, and what an LCA does is it will analyze all of those different processes, and it will report uh, the consequences of these in terms of impacts which are reported using environmental indicators. And the indicator that most people are familiar with of this global, is this global warming potential indicator, which is reported in these units, kilograms carbon dioxide equivalents, which I've talked about previously. Uh, but there are other impact indicators that can be used. One of them is ozone layer depletion, ozone depletion potential, and that's measured in kilograms um, CFC11 equivalents, CFC being trifluoro, tr sorry, trichlorofluoromethane, which is a refrigerant, so you measure it in those units, but there are other ozone depleting gases that can also be used and released, and they will each have an ozone depletion potential, uh, which has to be converted to this reporting unit. Many, many different types of impact categories. The one I'm going to talk about more than anything else is global warming potential. Uh, because what we're trying to do is work out carbon balances of things. We're trying to look at the consequences of using something, uh, the positive benefits of storing carbon in timber products uh, and the effect that that will have on global warming. But also there's the negative impacts of using things which are to do with the emissions that arise from the processing. So I'm going to be talking about global warming potential from the point of view of the processing and the emissions that are associated with it. <coughs> 